My own brothers died tragically as well, truth be told. It was 1868, and me and my older brothers were pulling a tidy profit running cattle into Juarez, Mexico. One night after my brothers retired for the evening, I found a little poker game in a cantina with a couple of cowboys. And I just couldn't lose. I even won an old Spanish coin that had to be a hundred years old. Well, I was mighty pleased with myself the next morning as my brothers and I rode for Texas. But before we crossed the border, those cowboys caught up with us. It was Johnny Ringo, Roscoe Bob Bryant, and another asshole named Jim. They wanted their money back and everything else we had, including our lives, as those boys didn't want us coming for them later. Bob put that old Spanish coin in my mouth and said, I won't have it said that I left you with nothing, boy. Well, those horses bolted, and there we hung as those bastards rode away. The branch finally snapped under the weight of the three of us, but me and my older brothers were bigger and heavier. They were already dead. And right then I swore to myself that I would avenge them. Ringo you know about. But Bob eluded me, until I heard he was riding with the Wild Bunch. I'd been on their trail for months, ever since they left their hideout in the Bighorn Mountains. Led by Butch Cassidy, they were a loose association of outlaws who robbed banks and trains from Colorado to Montana. Among them was the Sundance Kid, and that murderous hombre I was tracking, Roscoe Bob Bryant. Were you a part of that giant Pinkerton posse after the Wild Bunch? No, boy. A circus like that would have slowed me down. Besides, I wanted Bryant all to myself. I'd heard about a large shipment of gold being transported to Wilcox, Wyoming on the Overland Flyer. They blew the bridge with the intention of forcing the train to stop. Well, I assumed the Wild Bunch was likely in the still intact part of the train high above. I was determined to make that some bitch Bob pay for what he did to my brothers. ringing from blowing up that bridge. What'd you say? I can't hear a goddamn thing. Well, I made my way off unscathed and came upon a few members of the gang and had no choice but to dispatch them. Shit! Silas Green! From there, I had to negotiate an even more precarious route. I would need to get my ass out of there. I jumped from the frying pan into the fire as the train was clearly fixing to fall. I had found the gang, but in order to find old Bob, I needed to fight my way forward past a whole passel of desperados. Inside, inside, any way I could, I made my way towards my prey. You hear me? 
Well, what about the passengers? It was mostly a freight train, as I recall. There were no passengers aboard that day. I mentioned before, I am not fond of heights, but I was too busy dodging bullets to worry about falling to my death. Odds were I was likely to die that day anyway, so I was determined to take down as many of those bastards as I could. Times it was like shooting ducks in a shooting gallery. The only difference is these damn ducks shot back. I kept hoping the law would show up and give me a hand. You mean, like that giant Pinkerton posse that I read about? Did they come riding in, guns a blazing to help? Help? From the Pinkertons? <laughs> no, son. I had to fight the Wild Bunch all by my lonesome, as usual. Who the hell is that? Only a few stragglers were left, and I had to cut them down pronto if I was going to stay on old Bob's trail.
Once I silenced all those guns, I went searching for my nemesis, determined to finally have my justice. But the only survivor who welcomed me was George Flatnose Curry. Who was he? The fastest gun in the gang. Right after Sundance, I mean. And Kid Curry, and maybe Elsie Lay. Though some folks might dispute that. On that very same day, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid decided to leave the Wild Bunch behind and decamped for South America. They ended up living down there for many years, but I'm sure you already know all about that.